Hello, I'm Vinay Upal and I'm back with the question from the prediction series. So I'm going to read the question first and then we'll have a look at how to analyze it. This question is about a collapse of a gas bubble. So consider a small gas bubble at the center of a large spherical water body. So I'm just going to draw the diagram as I read the question so you guys can understand my thought process as I'm solving the question. So I have a large spherical body and a small bubble inside. Assume that the pressure far away from the bubble is a constant P0 because of which the bubble starts shrinking. Alright, so the pressure far away here, pressure is P0. Ignore the gas pressure inside the bubble and ignore any viscous or surface tension effects. Assume effect of gravity is also negligible and water is incompressible and at rest initially. The rate at which the radius of the bubble decreases at the instant the radius is half of its initial value in terms of P0 and the density of water rho is so and so and we need to find this value of K. So we need to find basically the rate at which the radius is decreasing. Alright, so because of this pressure here, the water will try to flow in and because it is symmetric, the water is going to flow in radially and it is going to try and compress this bubble here. So first off, before I show the solution, I want to highlight one important aspect of this question. That Bernoulli's equation is not valid here. The reason is Bernoulli's equation is derived under the condition of steady state. But here in this question, clearly the speeds are all changing with time, which is not steady state. So Bernoulli's equation cannot be used here. However, you think back to how Bernoulli's equation was derived in the first place. It was derived by using work energy theorem. So we are going to go back to the basics and we are going to use work energy theorem to solve this question. Let's have a look. So I have just drawn the diagram for the question. I have pressure P0 far away from the bubble. This is my bubble. So let's say the radius of the bubble initially is R0. And since the water body has been set to be very large, we are going to take the radius to be practically infinite. And because the pressure inside the gas bubble is negligible, the external pressure here P0 is going to end up compressing the gas bubble. And so this will be the situation where the radius becomes R0 by 2 for the bubble. And as was said in the question, the pressure is a constant P0. And because the water body is very large, we are still going to take this radius as infinite. Alright. So let's Let's solve this question using work energy theorem. So in order to write work energy theorem, I will need the kinetic energy of the water. And that is what I'm going to first try and calculate. So let me just first define the variables that I'm going to be using in this question. So let the initial radius of the bubble be R0, as I had shown here. Let the rate of decrease of radius of the bubble be u. So the radius of the bubble is decreasing at the rate of u when its final radius is r0 by 2. So what that means is physically the particles, the, the water particles here at the edge of the bubble are all traveling inwards with a speed u. And similarly, let the speed of the particles at a distance r from the center be v. So here on this spherical surface, all these particles are traveling inwards with the speed v. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to try and calculate the speed v in terms of u by simply using equation of continuity. Equation of continuity is that the velocity times the cross-sectional area is a constant. So the speed u into the cross-sectional area here, which is basically the surface area of this bubble, 4 pi into r square, where r is r0 by 2, should be equal to same quantity at a distance r from the center. 
So, on this spherical surface, the speed of all the particles is v. So, v times the area which is 4 pi r squared. And that is how I get the velocity v at a distance r from the center. So, this is the speed of all the particles at a distance r from the center. And the reason I calculated this is because I want to calculate the kinetic energy of the entire water body. So, I needed the speed of the particles at every point in the water body. So, now that I have the speed at a general point r, I can easily calculate the kinetic energy. Let us have a look. So, at a distance r, I am considering an infinitesimal shell whose thickness I am referring it to as dr. And I can write my kinetic energy as half dmv squared. And this infinitesimal shell has a mass of dm. We already know the speed v at a distance r, which we calculated on the previous slide. Mass dm of the shell can be written as density into the volume, and volume can be written as the standard area times the thickness, 4 pi r square into dr. Just substitute dm and v in this equation. And the limits, we, will, we are going to go over the entire water body. So, I am going to integrate from r0 by 2 till infinity. Like I said, we are going to consider the radius, the outer radius of the water body as infinite because the question said that the water body was very large compared to the bubble. The surprising thing is that even though we are integrating till infinity, we will still get a finite kinetic energy because of the 1 by r square dependence of the speed. So, this is the kinetic energy at the instant that the radius of the bubble is r0 by 2. And now we are going to apply our work energy theorem. So, the work energy theorem is that work done by the pressure here P0 will be equal to change in kinetic energy of the water body. Remember, we were asked to ignore the pressure inside the gas bubble. That is why we do not have any term for that. So, I am going to write P0 into the change in volume, the decrease in volume rather of the bubble should be equal to change in kinetic energy. So, I will have P0 times this is the initial volume, uh, final volume. So, this is the change in volume and should be equal to the kinetic energy that we just calculated here. And then it is just a straightforward algebra. I am going to leave this calculation to you. Uh, just like I left this integration, I am sure you will be able to integrate this on your own. So, from this equation, you will be able to get a simple relation for speed as root of 14 by 3 p0 by rho and this is your final answer. So, this is the rate at which the bubble radius is decreasing at the instant its radius is r0 by 2. So, that is how we will solve the question. Once again, the important point here is to note that Bernoulli's equation is not valid, but the, but the founding principle behind Bernoulli's equation is actually what we use, which is basically work on a theorem. In fact, this is easier than Bernoulli's equation because there is no gravity to account for like we used to do in Bernoulli's equation. So, this question was inspired from what is known as the rayleigh plesset equation in fluid mechanics taught in undergraduate courses. Uh, this is a very simplified version of that. So, I formulated this question based on that concept. A similar but a lot more complicated question appeared in one of the Asian Physics Olympiads, the 2010 Asian Physics Olympiad. I have attached the link if you in the description if you guys want to have a look. But uh, I wouldn't say it is too relevant for GE purposes because, because the question is quite mathematical. But if you are interested, you can have a look. Alright, so I hope you guys have understood the solution to this question. That's it for today. See you guys. Good night.